Hey, Ansel Lee here. Hey, welcome to another edition of Ansel Lee Live. Hey, today I've got uh, a couple of special friends, one special guest here. Uh, I, I, I guess, Jeff, you're, you're a special guest. I, I mean, it always, but but uh, we, uh, we've got uh, Shigante Caradona with us today. And uh, I'm not going to steal any of your thunder, Jeff. Uh, um, go ahead. Go ahead. You steal it. <laughs> Hey, but we're just we're we're so delighted to have her uh, on board, and I won't. <laughs> I'll let you introduce her. But uh, hey, Jeff, take it away. Oh, thanks, Ansel, and welcome, Shiganti Caradona, uh, president Hi. of Summit Information Sys Solutions, and it's so nice to to see you again. We have a little bit of a history. Um, our sons played youth baseball, and yes. um, you know, I'd like to say it was just only yesterday, but it's been a while and um, I won't, I won't go back, you know, how long it's been, but um, both our sons are doing so well and they're still great friends and it's a, uh, it's a really nice thing, but welcome uh, to the live today. And we really want to talk to you about um, your company and your leadership in the company. And uh, let's just start with, um, can you give us a little bit about your background and, and um, how you've risen to this, uh, this role of leading this company? Sure. First of all, thank you, Ansel, and um, thank you, Jeff, for the introduction. Um, so I started Summit in 2002. I feel like I almost tripped into it. Um, my background is in engineering, and um, I worked on the defense industry for the first um, part of my career path and uh, in Huntsville, Alabama. Then we, at some point, decided to move to Richmond, Virginia, and um, we got into, uh, you know, just trying to settle into Richmond. And um, I started working at, uh, uh, you know, the corporate environment. And with uh, my husband, Chris, also working in that same corporate environment, it was very fast paced. And um, I feel like we were on a rat race. And that kind of led us to, you know, step back at um, a point in time and say, you know, what's working and what's not. Um, and during that time, we realized the impact it was having on our children. It was one of those places um, we were learning a lot, uh, growing from a career perspective, um, but it, it was taking a hit on our home life. And our children were the uh, ones that felt it. And mm. so we said, well, someone needs to get off this rat race. And um, here we were in our 30s with three children and competing with uh young folks in their 20s um, coming right out of college, you know, and uh, very bright, um, brightest and the best and in a very performance based organization. So with that in mind, um, I said, you know, this this is too important for us. And in 2002, I stepped off the rat wheel with the corporate lifestyle. And that's when I formed Summit. Wow. It's um. <laughs> And, and, and look where you've grown to. It's amazing. So um, that started as a information solutions company, but then you made, right. you pivoted and uh, tell us about the move uh, into aerospace and coatings. And I'm saying coatings as, you know, we're coding things, C-O-A-T-I-N-G, because we're going to talk yes. a little bit about medical as we progress here. Absolutely. So with my background in engineering, I graduated with an electrical and computer engineering um, like I mentioned, I worked in the uh, defense industry, uh, started off with um, aerospace applications, uh, looking at uh, from a new development of uh, sensors and uh, on weapon systems and uh, primarily for the multiple launch rocket system, which had a family of munitions and uh, looking at uh, new new systems, as well as um, ones that were already uh, existing like the M77 uh, rocket that was used in Desert Storm, and so um, it, it was uh, it was a very much a you know f right out of college. I think I cried the first week and like I don't know what everybody's talking about, um, but it was it was a great um, experience. Um, I was around a lot of um, amazing mentors, people that understood rocket science. And we're, you know, willing to teach anything you wanted to learn. And I felt like I just lapped it up. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was a foray into um, aerospace. 
and also learning how to evaluate uh, and be uh, good at analysis um, and looking at performance, especially when I was looking at, um, you know, in some ways, uh, when I moved on to project office, which managed the, some of these systems. And they were large. And some of them were um, not quite fielded, but when Desert Storm came, we were able to field it, um, come back with new requirements, and then look at that and go, hey, how can we, you know, uh, make it more effective so our warfighters on the ground can have a longer arm, more range, more lethality, uh, because expected kill is important. It's either you kill or you get killed. And that's what you're, you know, putting your 18 year olds and your other soldiers out there. And so that was a really a, a good experience, good learning curve for me. Um, and each one building upon another when it comes to leadership, you know, kind of starting from the ground up and, and building that. And so moving to Richmond, it was difficult to find a defense um, company right there in the heart of Richmond. And what we realized, it was more of a commercial business centric environment. And so um, I kind of did the pivot of, um, you know, maybe try this commercial uh, business. And when I went in there, it's like, how do I go from optimizing expected kill to, you know, credit card industry that is has all these uh, cool algorithms, cool marketing strategies. So really immersed myself into that and started applying some of the lessons of uh, software development lifecycle, you know, that we had used for even um, for the Army's life cycle development from taking requirements to design and development and um, and building and integration and testing and so forth. So bringing some of those principles um, was really interesting. And so learned it from a different aspect, from a business side of things. Um, and it was just fascinating to me. It was yeah. something new. Um, I, I love the idea of um, time to market was an important factor in the commercial. Uh, it's kind of like test and learn. Um, and whereas working in the government sector, it was very long life cycles. And, and clearly for good reasons, you have, you're heavy on the requirements, you have safety, reliability and all of those things. Uh, but sometimes you get so bogged down, um, you can't move things forward in a faster time frame. So kind of, finding that balance. So those were kind of the lessons learned along the way. Um, I don't know if that answered your question, but um, mm -hmm. I could certainly talk about um, my background in health as well. Yeah, that's, um, and I think I'd like to let Ansel in on this because we talked earlier that uh, he has a question about that specific point. So Ansel, I, I know you, you're interested in this part of, and I am too, and I know our listeners will be. So let's talk a little bit about that. No, I, I, yeah, thanks, Jeff. I, you know, one of the things I think I find fascinating in, in, in your journey is that you became a nurse in the middle of, you're, you're, you're an engineer, but you became a nurse. And tell us about that, you know, and, and the impact that had on, on, on your career. Absolutely. Um, so I, it kind of is a long story, but I don't know how to quickly boil it down other than to say I grew up with a family of six girls. And growing up, we all made a pact um, that we all wanted to be physicians so that we can do more mission centric work. My mom was a very much a humanitarian. And growing mm -hmm. up in India, all of us were born there. Um, we immigrated to this side of the world when I was about eight, eight and a half. And so that dream of how to give back and was always instilled in us as, as a children. Um, and so I majored in um, college in uh, chemistry pre-med um, and I was the third of the six girls. And, um, and somewhere along the path um, in my junior year, I realized, you know what, this is, um, it's a longer path than I'm able to kind of stay on. And I watched the two go in front of me and right. I realized we needed a job. We needed to, and we really struggled financially at that time just to get, um, uh, you know, acclimated into the uh, to this side of the world. We left everything we had and started all over again. And so education wow. was important. And so 
for me, I, at that point, I pivoted from medicine to pre-med to engineering because I had a lot of my math already. Um, right. And so along the way, I would always continue to take uh, courses while I was working as an engineer and also started a family almost right away. Um, mm -hmm. And it wasn't until 1993, which was probably one of the most pivotal moments in my life, um, was when our oldest, my oldest sister, who was a cardiology fellow, she had just finished um, um, doing internal medicine at um, Emory and was uh, accepted into the cardiology fellowship at Tulane. But she hadn't been there at uh, Tulane for about a month and we tried to help her settle in. Um, and Jeff Ryan, our youngest, was uh, six weeks old that um, on that trip, that last um, trip I had. But bottom line is um, she was shot and killed in a, a carjacking um, that happened in 93. And oh, it was wow. kind of like all of our dreams just in one split moment, just in all the efforts that she had put just seemed like poof. Um, and being the oldest, it was also setting the pace for all the rest of us girls. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, at that point and that moment after, I mean, we went through a lot of, um, you know, heartaches um, mm -hmm. dealing with that. And then also with my mother who, who had a lot of heart problems that so she was doing cardiology to right. be part of her uh, physician. So at that point, I said, you know what, I'm going to take some baby steps. And I, I said, I'm going to go into nursing. And, the, and then from nursing, I'll go back to Madison. And that was the path I, I was driven. I never um, stayed clear away from that path. It, it was just, a, you know, taking those short, short steps to get there. So I did go back to school after, I want to say, eight, seven, eight years of being in the engineering industry. I know a lot of my colleagues were like, what are you doing, Shikanti? I'm like, I, I realized life is short. I saw what just happened. And if I'm going to do something, I'm going to make this change. And um, now with three children in tow, um, whatever it took. And so went through nursing school, um, got my bachelor's in nursing. And um, in, the, in the summers, I would work as a consultant um, for the Army um, and working on different systems again, but right. I kept doing what I needed to. And that was one of the reasons why I moved to Richmond, just to get a break, get a change from scen of scenery. Um, so I think along the way, each area, each thing taught me lessons um, and made me who I am today. It's a... Uh... It's an incredible story. And, you know, this is a first in a series of um, of ex exploring your journey. It's in really incredible. And for me, knowing Ryan, um, as I know him, he's an incredible young man. And, you, you know, as you talk about, you know, your training and uh, and raising a family, um, I was going to school at the same time you were. And but I never had to I never had to bring my kids to class with me like you did. So it's another testament to the, 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 the um, difficulties that a woman has that a lot of us men don't really understand. And I would like to explore that a little bit with you, you know, bringing your child to class. I mean, um, I never had to do that. I was always sort of, you know, it was hard yeah. for me to go to class, but uh, talk a little bit about that. I think it's uh, sure. So, you know, when I was in the engineering program, you realize I, I would walk in and I would almost do a quick demographics when I walked into a classroom, um, especially a new classroom. How many women in here? How many women of color? How many, you know, just in my back of my head. Um, and I, I did that even in my early part of my career because you realize you're working in a male centric environment um, and you know, would love to get more women and more chill, you know, girls into the STEM program um, and the math and sciences. And so it was always, um, you know, I learned to become uh, somewhat of a minority in that sense. You know, you, you do what you have to do to move it forward. And then in the nursing program, um, I realized now that I have the kids, you know, you can plan a day all you want. Then you have that one child that gets sick that morning yeah. and and you're going, I don't know what to do with this one. Um, <laughs> and you can't take him to daycare. You can't, you know, and that happened quite a bit. 
And mm -hmm. um, there were times I would ask um, some of my nursing <clears throat> colleagues, my friends, you know, hey, could you watch, you know, Aaron, you know, I've got to go take this class um, or, you know, take care of um, one of my other children. And we kind of bartered for <laughs> for so I could go in there and do that. Right. Um, yeah. And 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 I recall one time having our oldest, Aaron, in one of my classes and I'm going, oh, this might not have been a good one to bring him to. Um, <laughs> you know, it was just like, Ew. Um, mm -hmm. but I, you just did what you had to do because yeah. you want to finish yeah. the program. And well, I, it, it, was, it seemed to me that Aaron did quite well because he's an attorney. So maybe those early, early classes uh, sort of uh, imparted some um, discipline for him. So and all your kids are, are great. So um, uh, what a story. Um, yeah. and so I don't know how we are on time, but we're probably getting close to landing this. Yeah. Episode. I, you know, and I listen, thank you. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for sharing what you just shared, Shigante. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's so powerful. And um, and uh, it just means so much, um, and and the impact it's, it's had on your career and your direction, and hey, and, and your company, and 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 I, you know, and this is a series of conversations we're going to have, but uh, I, you know, I really, and what I wanted in this is for people to know you. And uh, and to hear your background uh, as as you move forward as you develop this company, and so hey, this is a great uh, a great first conversation, and um, I'm just uh, I'm just very thankful. If someone wants to get that uh, right now, if somebody wants sure. to get in touch with you, uh, the best way to do that is uh, really uh, they can reach out to you on direct direct message here on LinkedIn. That's a perfect way to do so. And also, if you were to go to our website, we have a uh, contact us form in the bottom. And that's another way to do it. Um, but definitely would love to hear from y'all. And thank you for this opportunity as well to speak to you. Well, it's been great to have you. I'm just going to sort of tee up the next episode with Shiganti Caradona. We're going to talk about her vision moving into, into medical uh, devices and coatings. So um, that's a little tease for everybody. You're going to want to stay tuned and join in on the next episode. So thank you for being here. It's fascinating. You're a fascinating person. So thank Aww. you. Thank you. Thank you both. You bet. All right. Thanks, guys. Hey, if, and if you can't find Shigante, um, Caradona, find me and I'll connect you with, with uh, Shigante. And find and me and I'll connect. I, you. Oh, yeah. And Jeff Beecher. That guy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. We'll get you there. You will, you will. We have between the two of us. So, at any rate, listen, thanks so much, both you guys. And, uh, hey, listen, have a great week and um, and more later. More. Sounds later. good. Thanks. Right. Take care. Thank Bye. You.